Hello, Dominic here. I am the Festival Director of the Bournemouth Writing Festival. Looking forward to welcoming you to Bournemouth on the 26th, 27th and 28th of April 2024. Now, I've been saying on these videos that we have over 80 writing events and activities happening over, over those three days. Well, I counted them all up the other day and I've actually lied a little bit because it's a lot more <laughs> than 80. It's actually 101 different writing and writing activities and events happening over those three days on the 26th, 27th and 28th of April. Um, and there's lots of talks, lots of workshops, lots of free stuff like our poetry hub, um, writing on the beach. Um, and there's a few uh, talks and workshops that are pay what you can. Running alongside those uh, um, events happening on over the weekend are, are two um, writer competitions, as well as uh, creative writing for adults with additional needs, which are going to be happening in Boscan. Now, one of the uh, <laughs> many talks and workshops that are happening over the weekend is with Tom Sykes and Louis Nessa, who I'm very pleased to say is joining me today. Their talk, and I'm probably going to mess this up, but I'm going to go for it. Their talk is called Going Coastal, Writing, Drawing and Seaside Psychogeography. <laughs> and I'm sure they're going to be talking about that in a second. Um, and it is on Sunday, the 28th of April at the Pavilion Dance at two o'clock. Now, Tom Sykes is a writer and has worked extensively across Asia and Africa and written many travel stories, books, essays and articles. His writing has appeared in The Times, Observer, Private Eye and The New Statesman, among many, many others. I just don't have time to list them all. He is now a senior lecturer in creative writing at the University of Portsmouth. So hello, Tom. Hi, Dominic. All right. Nice to meet you. Uh, and you. And Louis Netta is also a senior lecturer at the University of Portsmouth, but in illustration. Louis is a practicing illustrator, animator and printmaker. And you can see some of his amazing work on his website, louisnetta.com. Hello, Louis. Hello. Uh, so, um, Tom, why don't we start with you and find out a little bit about yourself. So, Tom, you've been traveling for a long time across the world um, and it's obviously been a very big part of your life, working and personal. So why don't you tell us some of the highlights that influenced your writing? Well, I'm tempted, I'm tempted to say Bournemouth, actually, because it, it, and you think <laughs> I'm just sucking up to you by saying that, I don't, wouldn't you? But um, it actually just thinking about the most recent project that i've done with louis which we'll come on to talk about probably more coast of teeth which is a travelogue of english seaside towns we traveled to about 21 of them around um england not the uk and um and actually bournemouth was w w one of our favorite places in the sense of a kind of seaside town that's been very successful in kind of protecting its identity and in terms of just managing its kind of landscape that, you know, it's a very green and leafy kind of uh, town, um, lovely beach, you know, down here in Portsmouth, we have a stony beach and just to have a kind of sandy beach is a real, is a real kind of privilege, we, we think. Um, but yeah, I mean, aside from that, going back, you know, I, I, I wrote a, 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 the first English language guidebook to um, Côte d'Ivoire in West Africa. And I spent three months with a photographer colleague there. Um, and that was that was a, an extraordinary experience. Um, you know, again, kind of investigating uh, the sort of traditional beliefs, the animist beliefs of people and seeing the, the, the ways in which that is still kind of very much um, animates sort of daily life and seeing some kind of, you know, the, the, the sort of influence of the, the kind of French colonial period and how that has been how that still kind of kind of resonates with people um i probably the most striking country i've been to is is india i, I had a sort of again sort of a quite long period of traveling around that country india is fascinating because it's like it kind of encapsulates it's like a world within a country so you've got all kinds of landscapes you've got all kinds of belief systems religions creeds cultures all kinds of foods um there are other countries but arguably the united states kind of is is large enough to to kind of yeah, as I say sort of encapsulate a, a, almost like a, a kind of world within national boundaries but um yeah sort of they've i've been traveling and writing for about 20 years so there, there are quite a lot lot of highlights i would say 
I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to hearing about what your talk's going to be because I'm sure, you know, just judging by the title, it's going to be influenced by all those things you just said. So, Louis, your illustrations and animations are very distinctive and very fascinating and beautiful. How do you work with a writer to bring collaboration to life? Um, well, as a, a longtime illustrator, it's, it, illustration is a very kind of collaborative art form. And I think as well, it, it's as opposed to being a fine artist where you're just sort of sipping wine, kind of smoking a cigarette and splashing some paint on a canvas and patting yourself on the back. Um, illustration is kind of, it has to have some kind of communicative function. It has to speak to somebody. Um, and I, I think knowing your collaborator is great. It's quite interesting doing this book. I really got to know Tom a lot better. I think we became good friends after this kind of project. I mean, we were friends before, but it's kind of quite a bonding experience. But um, I think as well, it's it's interesting in, in this case, the writing and the, the drawing are doing kind of different things, but sometimes similar. There's kind of crossovers, but they are quite distinct. So I think a good collaboration and, and a good illustration job is when you kind of have autonomy and agency and you kind of you're kind of doing your own thing but you're very much um aligned with the the the, the collaborator that you're working with so um so yeah i mean good illustration is is about um not probably not too dissimilar to what good writing is about which is basically kind of finding the subjects in a way you know from the kind of fluid reality and just being open to it and being alert to it um, so the job of a kind of writer and a kind of reportage artist probably there's a lot of crossover in that sense, kind of keeping a keen eye around things which are kind of emblematic and point to sort of other other ideas around these places. And there's a lot of commonalities in these in, a, in, in these various locations. But, um, but yeah, so I, I think there's 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 definitely similarity in that sense. Great. Okay. So your your the title of your talk is very in, intriguing. It's uh, going coastal, writing, drawing, and seaside psychogeography. So Louis, why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about what you're going to be discussing? <clears throat> okay. Well, first, I suppose psychogeography is something that came out of Paris in the sort of um, turn of the century, and really, it it was. Um, a philosophical kind of movement in practice it, it never it never really had a kind of firm practice necessarily other than the derive which is kind of wandering around and kind of seeing places but it, it was really a way of combating um a way of um of being directed in terms of urban planning so it's very much about instead of going and going shopping or going to the arcades of paris and going to all these different places going off side routes and getting lost and finding maybe poor districts or um, relying on kind of serendipity, things that are unex unexpected. So in that sense, um, we're very much inspired by that. And that's something that we, we did as well by walking and, um, and looking and being observant to what was happening on the ground and, and not really having a plan necessarily, in a sense, understanding a locale by being on the ground, um, engaging with people. So in that sense, that's the psychogeography. I suppose going coastal is a little bit of a joke on going postal, um, which isn't very funny, um, which is uh, which is uh, comes from the US in the 80s, I think, the postal workers coming into machine guns and so forth. But going coastal, it's kind of, it also, you know, alludes to the sort of fun and irreverence, I think, um, which is also kind of fed into the book and, and which also typifies seaside towns as well as kind of this, these kind of fun irreverent places with you know victorian and modern amusements and so forth it's great and, and tom so you know you were born and bred uh, along the coast in portsmouth and you mentioned just now about how wonderful bournemouth is so so tell us from your perspective about writing you know of these seaside locations yeah i mean you know further to what louis was saying really i mean it's about kind of looking out for the kind of striking details in a place, you know, as, as a writer. It's about kind of, yeah, observing, looking around you, um, you know, trying to, to, to kind of see, you know, you've only got a brief period and we would only stay two to three days in, in these places. So you've got to try to kind of get some kind of an angle on that place fairly quickly. 
so it does require you know as Lee was saying a lot of kind of exploration and walking around and putting yourself in a situation where you might meet random people or where you might you know just having the courage to just kind of wander into a situation or a pub that maybe on the outside looks like it may not be the most inviting place for a couple of outsiders to go to but you do it anyway because you know who dares wins in a way like if you if you have that sort of courage it'll, it usually pays off um and sometimes you find yourself just being yeah i think that you know just allowing yourself to to kind of go with um the flow of what what what's sort of happening in a place not not having prejudices not having preconceptions about a place yeah a certain amount of kind of secondary research had taken place you know in terms of sort of finding out about the kind of demographics and sort of statistical realities of these places but for the most part this is a kind of impressionistic um take on seaside towns we make no um apologies for being outsiders and being kind of you know making a very brief sort of intervention but i think the advantage is louis was saying i think the advantage of that is that you do get a kind of um you know a certain kind of kind of um picture of a place that maybe you know someone who's lived there for many 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 years wouldn't get you know a kind of, and, and also i mean i suppose we speak as people who we're kind of outsiders but we're also kind of insiders because you know i grew up in a seaside town i grew up on hailing island which is a kind of former seaside resort which like many other seaside towns has kind of fallen on hard times and can't quite you know it's it's a very kind of seasonal economy where there aren't many there isn't much kind of spending power during the winter and so forth but we also both do both work in portsmouth and um you know and have done for for many years so yeah we kind of we yeah we have both sort of some inside knowledge but also we learned a lot and kept our minds open as much as possible traveling all around the country to try and get a sense of you know the seaside town which ha has a very kind of special place in the english kind of popular imagination doesn't it you know it really does and the 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 kind of history of seaside towns is fascinating you know particularly bournemouth was famous for being a spa town and all the middle classes used to come down to bournemouth and that's why the likes of you know the shelley family and um uh, robert louis stevenson and that they came down here and then you know there was a huge underinvestment in seaside towns and that changed the demographics and it feels like it's almost swinging back to uh, the middle class coming back and you know as you said that the beautiful sandy beaches where else can you get that you know is, is not many places and and there seems to be I don't know, a revival and i'm noticing that personally in the creative people that come to bournemouth which is where you know the bournemouth writing festival came about so it's it's really really interesting so what tom what are you hoping that the people that come to your talk leave with what, what are you hoping they're going to take away well we've got some um we hope some really intriguing interactive uh sort of uh activities that we're going to do um with people there so it'll be very much um sh yes sharing some kind of techniques and some some kind of a sense of like how we go about writing and, and drawing seaside towns but there will also be an opportunity for people to to get creative with us as well I'll have some kind of writing exercises that will be focused on observation and um, not just observation, but also kind of finding useful sorts of metaphors, you know, which which writers have to do. How we kind of, you know, liken one thing to another for the, for, you know, so that we can kind of come away with some kind of poetic kind of um, capturing of a place. I mean, I you know, I'll just give you a very simple example you know the title of our book people always ask us about it why is it coast of teeth that's kind of an unusual title and there's i won't give you the long slightly boring answer i'll give you the i'll just simply say this about it that once we decided on that title as we as, as which was quite early on as we would sort of go to these various places we went you know to, up to the to the, the north place like blackpool and robin hood's bay and we went to bournemouth and Porquay and essex and all over the all over the country we would start to kind of notice buildings and rocks and various aspects of the kind of environment around us that would kind of remind us of teeth you know whether belonging to human beings whether teeth that were kind of in really bad state or not um 
or whether more like you know these kind of i remember being in blackpool and seeing these kind of um they all, almost look like tusks or fangs from an animal but they were made out of metal and just kind of sticking out of the ground we never actually found out there wasn't a kind of plaque explaining what they were so it was this kind of mysterious kind of weird industrial kind of teeth monument that that we just passed by in, in blackpool um so yeah we'll be getting into to kind of how you start to think sort of laterally and kind of poetically about place and environment and landscape in order to and that you know i think that applies as much to um you know the sort of writing and uh, as it does to the drawing side of things um you know louis uh, does a great i'm speaking for him you can ask him yourself because he's right here but he does a great kind of live drawing um sort of demonstration and we would invite people to come along you know there are lots of writers of course who are going to be at a writing festival but hopefully there'll be artists but hopefully there'll be people who also who like to write and draw um you know i know we know i know lots of kind of comic comic book creators and graphic novelists who can write and draw equally well i'm very jealous of them because i cannot draw at all but i can write reasonably well um so yeah there'll be something for everyone there i think and certainly something for kind of writers and artists alike so louis from a from a kind of visual artist point of view what would you hope that people that come to uh the talk uh go away with or are you kind of hoping people go in and and speak to random people are going to into kind of any old pub to have a look inside yeah no i want to just um you know develop the generation of people who will take over for me you know and uh you know but no, i'm just kidding um but no i think i think just um get them excited about i mean drawing on the spot is quite interesting it's quite a magical thing because the, the drawing sort of comes to be it you know it, it the formulation of the drawing is kind of like the formulation of sort of vision um and experience and it all sort of just it just kind of happens so there's sort of magic to it so i i hope people sort of see that um also that drawing is a way is, is a kind of other language not unlike written word but it's a visual language and so we, we kind of piece together drawings um we're not as used to seeing drawing as much as we used to drawing used to be a very you know very ubiquitous it was the, it was the news image um for hundreds of years um but then the you know the, pho the photograph took over and other slick media and so on and so forth so in some ways the drawing is this kind of ancient form but i feel like it's kind of it's part of us so when we see it, it, there's something familiar about drawing as well. So people, people kind of yearn for it. They they're excited by it because I think it's it's it speaks to them. So hopefully, um, they can get a sense of that. And I think also um, I would like to to show them a few tricks of the trade as well. You know, in terms of how to construct images and and how you might kind of formulate an image based on a, on a kind of scene or a scenario or a tableau or whatever. So. Great. Well, thank you so much. And I think I don't know what it is about the sea, but the sea always inspires artists, don't they? Because it's just so visual and beautiful. And you, for me, you never know quite what's underneath the surface. So they what might rise up. But okay. Thank you so much, Tom Sykes and Louis Netta. Um, their talk, "Going Coastal: Writing, Drawing, and Seaside Psychogeography," is on Sunday, the twenty eighth of April at two o'clock at the Pavilion Dance. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having us. Thank Tom. you very much. No problem. And I look forward to seeing everybody else at the Bournemouth Writing Festival on the 26th, 27th and 28th of April. See you later. Take care. Bye.